Hi, good evening. I'm Dr. Philip McMillan. Thank you for joining me as we continue this journey of science around COVID-19. Essentially, what I'm doing is I'm trying to utilize the science to help to convert it into something practical, because that's what I do as a clinical researcher. I take the research and try and find ways to make it practical and real so that the public and generally patients can find benefit with it. So this time I'm talking about brain protection against COVID-19. And you can see here, this is me with a helmet. I'm not great at throwing a ball, but just the same. It's showing the protection that I think can occur with nitric oxide. And this largely is in preparation for the upcoming uh, webinar. And this is nitric oxide and COVID potential strategies for improved outcomes. And again, I'll be going through the science, explaining the history about nitric oxide, how the body uses it, and critically how it's relevant in the context of COVID-19. So this is a quite an important um, point that I think, and it's tied into our Kickstarter program that will be coming, Humming Heroes, where we've got a book coming out. And I'll Towards the end, I'll show a few pictures of this. This is from Lumentia Publications. We're working in collaboration to make a story with the science and tying it in to the, um, the, the presentation, the webinar as well. So uh, wish us luck with that and the support would be appreciated. And additionally, coming up in another day is microclots and the benefit of spike detox. So this is with three other experts, Joachim, Robin and Shankara, different parts of the world, sharing their ideas about uh, what potentially could make a difference with regards to microclots and how important it is. So, yes, there's lots coming up this week and uh, I want you to hopefully find the benefit of listening to this science. So let's get back to this brain protection of nitric oxide. And again, this is part of the presentation that I'm preparing. So as I'm preparing it, I'm thinking about how to capture some of these concepts. And the most important concept to capture is that of the sinuses. So this is just an image showing the paranasal sinuses here. And you can see the side view of the brain of the head and the front view and it's just showing you where the sinuses are sitting so you have these frontal sinuses which are just behind the forehead you have the ethmoid um, sinuses here that's uh, just um, above the nose region and you have the maxillary sinus here and you can see this is a cut view these are in the cheekbones and you can see where the ethmoidal sinuses are here and where the frontal sinuses are here uh, this sinus here, I think, is extremely important. And the, the reason why I'm focused on this at the moment is because from a clinical point of view, I am seeing and anticipating that JN1, the new variant, seems to be very neurotrophic. That means it seems to target the nervous system more than anywhere else. And when you think about the different variants, I think Dr. Chetty had said this, and I realized he was quite right. The first wave, it was primarily lung. Um, subsequently, when we had Delta, it was lung and gut. And then Omicron seemed to be more about the neurology. And to be frank, it seems that the further variants seem to be even more neurotropic in terms of causing neurological symptoms. So this is a complex area but it's part of what i'll be covering in the webinar so if you you haven't registered please register but i'll give you an idea as to what we'll be talking about so as i said the sinuses are very important and critical for us to understand what is happening here i have a image of the sphenoid sinus or the uh, the central bit and this is what it's showing so this is the head here and I'm trying to see if I can demonstrate that the sphenoid sinus here is sitting the furthest back. And it's almost at the center of the whole of the skull. If you drew this as a circle, this one here, this sphenoid sinus, seems to be really important from a neurological point of view. And this is why I think that it's, it's very relevant. I've got another image here that um, I hope shows this. So this again shows you a head. 
Um, the, the brain is not perfect, but I've tried to get it in the right place. But again, you see the sinuses here, frontal sinus, ethmoidal sinuses. This is a maxillary sinus in the cheek. And then this sphenoid sinus is quite deep in the brain, right at the center. And it's sitting just by this little gland here, which you can't quite see. I should have put an arrow on it, is the pituitary gland. And this gland is very, very important as it almost links the brain to the rest of the body, producing hormones, including triggering the release of cortisol um, and so on, ADH, you know. And so it's a very important uh, organ right here. And when you think about this bit of the brain, this phenoid sinus, if this gets infected, chronically infected with um, uh, the SARS-CoV-2 virus, specifically um, Omicron, you can see that because of its proximity to the brain, it could then lead to neurological symptoms. And so it's one of those access points that it has. And this is why I'm saying that nitric oxide is so critical because nitric oxide has a number of very valuable functions. It's, it's quite a remarkable um, um, biological function. It has multiple things. You can see here, critically, it's antiviral and antibacterial, I didn't put it in here. Neurotransmission, it does neurotransmission, it has anti-tumor effect, it has vasodilation, platelet aggregation, it reduces inflammation, and it's just a combination of nitrogen and oxygen. And it's a gas, quite remarkable that the body would use a gas instead of just uh, another peptide and so on. So it's a very important um, molecule. And as I was highlighting is that it seems to be concentrated in the sinuses, uh, almost like a reservoir. And therefore, any strategy that increases the nitric oxide level is likely to be protective for the brain. And I, I've created an image that I, I, I hope makes sense. It doesn't um, look great. Is that I've put myself here in a bubble. And this bubble is supposed to represent the nitric oxide. When the levels are correct in the sinuses, it acts almost like a bubble of protection for the brain against the virus and some of the immune responses that can occur in the neurology around the brain. But this is the idea that I'll be trying to focus on for the, the webinar coming up and linking it as well to the little book that we have been working on that's hopefully giving the idea as to what it is that's important. It's what we call humming heroes inside the nose. Almost nobody knows. And it's highlighting that humming has a direct impact on nitric oxide levels. And so using the science to be able to try and bring something into reality. Here is um, quick excerpts, similar pages as I'd shown the last time. This is me by the fireplace. And you can see the first image here, lovely images that were presented. And it's showing this little boy without a care as his gentle breathing fills the air and tiny things drift into his nose. What do will they do there? Nobody knows. And so it's using imagery. And so it helps not just children, but adults to understand a little bit more about how that part of the body works. And this is, again, giving an idea as to how the immune system can have an impact on all of this and how the lymphocytes, because it has a direct impact on how the immune cells function, nitric oxide. And so you have all these immune cells working in conjunction with the natural systems in the body to utilize a very powerful technique of nitric oxide to protect the brain, protect the sinuses, and aim to fight against infection. Quite a remarkable concept. So just to remind everyone, these are important topics, interesting and slightly off the normal pattern that you would hear. But the point is, science has no limitations. Whatever can benefit someone, we will try and find a way to be able to utilize it to make a difference. So have a good evening, and we look forward to talking to you again tomorrow for microclots, benefits of spike detox, and as well uh, on Thursday of this week, 
about our nitric oxide presentation and you can register at the link below. Have a great evening until we speak again.